This is a brief look at um, oval racing mode on a Micron 5 2T devices, cart loggers. So we'll go ahead and power on the device. Effectively what we're going to be doing here is when the device is configured to be in oval racing mode, uh, we're going to be able to post-process the lap times um, as well as the corner speeds, um, the corner acceleration forces, and uh, the RPM throughout the lap itself, as well as any analog inputs like uh, EGTs or similar head temperature sensors or um, water temp sensors that are plugged into the device. Since this is a 2T model, uh, you can see the connectivity for the temperature sensors here on the back. So once the device is powered on, we can go menu, we click system settings. This is just to check that your device is in oval race mode. So you can see here under general settings, the type of racing is oval racing as opposed to um, circuit racing or speed racing. So when configured in oval racing mode, when we have sessions logged on the device, as this does when we click memory here, I'll just select one of the available sessions here. And you can see for one of these sessions, um, you can see that there's 55 laps in total and it's showing for lap 15. This was um, the lap time here. This is the maximum and minimum RPM, 7690 and 6181. This is the drop between maximum and minimum RPM, so the delta between the two. And then this is a 2T model that had two EGTs plugged in, so you can see the maximum and um, minimum for each um, channel or each EGT for that particular lap. So 1004 was the maximum on the EGT1, 899 min, and then 985 was the maximum on EGT2 degrees Fahrenheit, and 891 degrees Fahrenheit um, was the minimum. For all the laps of this particular session, you can see uh, the maximum and minimum, minimum temps here is 1041 degrees Fahrenheit and 1016. Um, you can also see the maximum RPM that was recorded, almost 807990, and then the maximum speed. It shows you the date and the time here at the top, just for bookkeeping purposes, so you can keep track of which runs you're actually looking at. But this is a summary page of, effectively, uh, the laps that are of interest here. So if we click page again, it'll show you that this is your minimum, um, one of your, your, your minimum lap time here. So the best lap was lap 15, 15.8 seconds. This is a circle track midget car. Um, so we'll click page again, and then it's gonna select that particular lap and we can analyze it in more detail here. So when we click page one, one more time, you'll see that it's actually showing a graphical representation of the track map here for your best lap, which is lap 15. And then this is the, the lap time is 15.8 seconds. Uh, this is the total lap distance of so 1,412 feet. That's good, especially for a circle track vehicle. Um, you can see now that it's completed going through lap 15. It's incremented to lap 16, which is a slightly slower lap time, slightly different uh, total distance. And you can see it's stepping through um, the live speed as the cursor moves around uh, the lap itself here. The start finish line that's been selected is right at the, the corner here. And you can see the time of the lap incrementing here, the speed, the live speed where the cursor is, as well as the RPM. We can actually make this go slower so we can step through the data at a slower rate or we can show it in real time here. So we'll, uh, we'll go slower here just to show a mid corner speed, let's say is approximately 45 miles per hour at 5200 RPM on this lap and that's occurring, it's about 17 seconds. Um, if we click page again, um, it's going to show us a breakdown of these particular uh, sec sectors of the lap itself. Um, we will go actually to lap 15. Since that was a flying lap here, this was the, the best lap itself. You can see how those sectors are actually changing, but this is showing breaking points effectively in corner apexes here. So the, the speed at M1 which is the corner exit is 51 miles per hour, and then the peak speed at, um, at the end of the straightaway was 70.8, and that's the end of the first straightaway, and those are the RPMs at those particular points. Corner exit, you were a little bit slower on, uh, at M3 or sector three, um, and you can see 50.9 miles per hour, slightly lower RPM, and then the peak speed that was achieved on the back straightaway there is 71.4 slightly faster at a slightly uh, 6800 RPM here. And once again, this is for your the best lap, lap 15, 15.8 15, uh, seconds. Um, then that's signified by the fact that it says best here. 
we can scroll through different laps obviously lap 14 you can see where you achieve these peak peak and valley speeds effectively changes this lap was slower so um, it might have been off the throttle or on the throttle at different points in the lap and we can just step through all the laps here and kind of investigate um, how they're different from one another of particular interest is the fastest lap obviously because um, we can kind of replicate that for uh, future laps and hopefully improve upon our lap time so we can go back to 15 here and then the final thing that you can look at directly on the device here in oval racing mode if we click page one more time you can see the lateral grip uh, kind of graphical bar graph that's represented here on the track map for your fastest lap so these bar graphs are kind of normal to um, or 90 degree perpendicular to um, the path at which you're traveling at the uh, at that particular location of the track map and uh, larger lines in this bar graph represent more lateral grip the units here is feet per second squared so 32.2 or 32.18 feet per second squared is 1 g of lateral force so we're seeing in turns one to two here approximately um, two g's of lateral force and about the same in uh, turns three to four and you can see kind of how it varies um, which allows you to investigate effectively how um, how the lateral grip and the tires are loading up um, and the, how the vehicle is developing lateral grip throughout the turn so consistent um, development and uh, saturation of the lateral grip and then um, until the corner apex and then at corner exit consistent decay of the lateral grip is important to maximize um, the, the entry exit speeds as well as the average corner speeds um, for this particular application so we can also once again step through the laps here and see somewhat how each of them are different so a few of these laps have slightly lower lateral grips tending to um, agree with the fact that the lap time is slightly slower so the lap that uh, was the fastest obviously had uh, some of the hardest turns since this is a fairly simplistic oval track um, that would intuitively make sense. And we can see here just on a kind of warm up lap, um, we're about 1G in the first turn and just shy of 2Gs in the second turn. And then this is showing the average um, for both turns around the entire course. We click page again, it will bring us back to this home screen here um, of all of the, the lap summary with the speeds, EGTs or temperatures, as well as RPM um, max and mins for each of the recorded laps. So if we click back to tests, obviously there's a few different sessions that have been recorded here. You can see how many laps were recorded, um, how many laps were yellow, meaning that there are slower non-full um, non speed laps. The time as well as um, the date is all the same, um, 08, 18, 2018. Uh, the time for the particular session and then the fastest lap for that particular session so we'll go to a different one here that has a slightly faster lap and that would be lap nine here that was the best and you can see the max speed was slightly higher at 74.4 miles per hour we'll click page again this is um, a bar graph indicating um, each lap time uh, each time the the beacon was triggered GPS beacon um, this is the lowest lap here and you can see a few laps at full speed and then a yellow lap and a few more laps at full speed um, so this lap was 15.53 seconds in total so we'll click page again it'll select that lap and then once again we can go through and view the data in uh, real time or slow um, format this particular lap was slightly different in terms of its length and then uh, that's the time there this this is the best lap once again signified by um, this the this word best here and uh, this is lap nine we'll see the max and min um, corner speeds and uh, straightaway speeds here and then the lateral grip here you can see at the beginning of turns uh, uh, one and two um, uh, it's fairly consistent and then three you can see that there's quite a large um, jump in the lateral grip indicating that it's possible the, the vehicle hit a, hit a bump there and hooked dramatically 
um, but you can see that's that's well over two G's of lateral turning force there. So that was just a brief overview of the oval racing mode that's on um, that you can configure an A Micron 5 2 T uh, to do, as well as post processing some of the live lap times that's shown um, and more detailed data analysis directly on the device here. Obviously, a lot of this um, can be done in more detail using Race Studio 3. Um, downloading the, the data logs themselves and the, the and then opening them in Ray Studio Analysis to look at the log files in more detail. However, for track side um, data analysis, it's very useful to um, utilize the device in this way um, just to get instant feedback, um, especially when troubleshooting um, particular um, issues with the vehicle.